My first job in sound and in film was as a sound effects editor at Hanna-Barbera Studios. Hanna-Barbera was known in the 60s and 70s and 80s as the company that made Saturday morning cartoons for kids, most notable for the Flintstones and Scooby-Doo and Huckleberry Hound or any one of a number of child's fair for Saturday morning. And I was lucky enough to be asked to be part of a training program where they were bringing in um, individuals to teach them the sort of arcane art of cartoon sound. And I did very well in that program, and they, and they gave me a job. And I learned on the job. I didn't go to film school. Um, in fact, I dropped out of university studies to be a translator for the UN to come to Hollywood to get in the movie business anywhere I could find a gig. And my first gig was as a sound editor. The advice that I have for people starting out is manifold. So this one might take a minute or two. First and foremost, and you've heard this a thousand times, but it always bears repeating, um, be true to yourself. I found that I took detours early in my career because I wanted to be a sound designer like other sound designers. And I didn't develop my own sonic voice. And my success in sound didn't really start to blossom till I started to just think like Mark Mangini and act like Mark Mangini and make sounds like Mark Mangini, not imitate sounds like another famous sound designer would make. Um, it wasn't until I, I really invested in myself that um, I really started to get good at this. Because for me, my observation is that I am hired for me. Every filmmaker with some kind of integrity hires me or you for your take on something. They want to know what you uniquely bring to their project, and it is incumbent upon you to express that, to say, director, here's what I think this scene should sound like. Here's how I'd like to approach that, and here's what I think that means for the story. And that can only come from inside of you. And filmmakers respond to that kind of freshness and that spontaneity, and I think that's going to make anyone successful, not just in sound. The other advice I would give is, this is not a part-time gig. I see a lot of film students, graduates, they want advice, they come, they want to talk to me about how to move their career forward, but they haven't really figured out if they want to be in sound or maybe scoring or they want to be in, or they want to be producers. This is a complex, detail-oriented endeavor that requires a full commitment. And to that end, the next piece of advice is do it every day. I don't do this because I get paid. I do this because I love to do this. And that means when I don't have a gig, I'm doing it anyways, like making these crazy libraries that we've been talking about. I would record sound if no one paid me to do it. And in fact, most of my library, I never got paid to record that. I did it because I got a giggle being in a pen with an elephant, or I got a giggle being in a Lamborghini at 150 miles an hour. That's the kind of stuff that gets my blood going and gets my excitement going. And it's because I love this, and that love will translate to those who you would want to hire you when you show the enthusiasm for it and you show that this is what I do. I am Mark Mangini. I am sound. That's all I do. And um, that, that will just pay off in spades throughout the rest of your career. So that means, here's an example of what you can do. You're not on a gig? Go take one of my movies, strip the sound out of it, and cut some new sound for it. And Figure out what your take on a scene of Dune or Blade Runner or Mad Max Fury Road might sound like if you had been the supervisor or the sound designer. It's a great exercise in stretching your creative muscles. It also keeps you in the game. It keeps you constantly polishing your skills because the secret to it, like an athlete, is that you have to train the muscles. The reason Lionel Messi is the greatest soccer player in the world, or one of them, is that he trains every day for eight hours, so that when he needs the skill, it's second nature. You don't want to be caught flat-footed when the filmmaker says in the middle of the mix, you know what, Mark, 
what I really need here is a sound that makes me feel like this. And if you've been doing it every day, whether you, whether you got paid to do it or not, in one of those days when you weren't getting paid, you might have encountered a situation, a challenge you couldn't solve creatively, and you, you gritted your teeth through it, and you solved the problem, and you'll remember that in the moment, the moment when it matters the most, when you're on the spot, and a ding, the, you, you, you recall it, and you think, oh, this is what I'm going to do. I did this before. These are the moments of great success for you that will help propel you to greater success.